We're going to have a look at this question. This is the real question, but this is the um, structure that you often see it in. And I hope that as we go through this, the techniques that we've started to develop, they'll start to coalesce. I need a red marker. So we're going to graph these. That's going to be the, the technique that we use to help us solve this original equation. Okay. So, we'll begin with the first thing that you can see. This is the easiest part. You're asked to graph an absolute value function. Okay. So I want you to remember what y equals the absolute value of x minus 1 looks like. Uh, last time we thought, okay, we will deal with this uh, by, that's too high, we'll deal with this by, no, stop, I'll just leave it. We'll deal with this by cases. It required a lot of algebra and writing stuff out. I'm going to try and take a little more of a visual approach today, uh, which shouldn't sit on its own. You need the algebra as well, but hopefully when you see these sort of overlap with each other, you're like, oh, okay, I sort of get it. Here's a way that you can graph y equals the absolute value of x minus 1 without very much algebra required. Okay. For starters, what we want to draw is a supplemental, supplemental graph, which is y equals x minus 1. Clearly, y equals x minus 1 and y equals the absolute value of x minus 1 are very closely related. Okay? So maybe in light pencil on top of your axes, maybe in light pencil you can draw y equals x minus 1. I, don't, I can't really do uh, y equals minus light, so I'm just going to dot one. Okay? This is what y equals x minus 1 looks like. Okay. Are you content with that? Are we good enough at recognizing straight lines that when you see x minus 1, you think gradient, y-intercept, okay, there's my picture. Right? I'm going to label it as such. Okay. Now, again, rather than appealing to the algebra, I'm going to look at this thing and say, now, if that's what regular x minus 1 looks like, what's the difference if I slap absolute value signs around it? Well, when this line is positive, the absolute value of a positive thing is just the thing itself, right? So see all that stuff that's above the, the x-axis? It doesn't need to change. The absolute value of that part is still that line, okay? So you did it lightly to draw that sort of construction line, but now you can put this nice and solid because you're like, that's part that I want. All right, then you look at the other part. Now that's a negative section, and we know from the definition of absolute value, when the stuff inside is negative, we want to slap another negative sign on to bring it up to the positive part. And that's why when we saw the very first time we drew this, uh, the absolute value graphs are often called bouncy graphs, right? So you can see this part up here, I am going to reflect across the x-axis. I'm going to reflect it vertically, okay? Which is why it ends up looking like this. Okay. So you didn't have to think too, too hard about the algebra, but if you slap a minus sign in front of y equals x minus one, you're going to get y equals 1 minus x. Okay? And the labeling of the graphs is very important. Okay, so far so good. So what I've done is now I've got the first graph. Then they ask us to graph this other one on the same set of axes. Well, I should say, it didn't say the same set of axes. I didn't say them. But if you're going to use them to solve for points of intersection, which is what this means, tell me when these graphs intersect with each other, then they're not going to be very much use if they're on two separate axes. So let's put them together. If you have another color there, I'm going to look at half x plus 1. OK, what does half x plus 1 look like? Well, conveniently, I actually have a uh, y-intercept there. What is that y-intercept? It's going to be 1 because the y-intercept down here would have been Negative 1, right? It would have been negative 1, but I reflected it. Remember that? Okay, so that's 1, which is convenient because positive 1 also happens to be the y-intercept here, right? What's the difference though? Can you tell me? Can you describe this line apart from its y-intercept? It's, it's, uh, it's not as steep, right? In fact, it's half as steep. Every time you go across one unit, you only go up half. So we can draw that in. It's going to look something like this. Now, you'll notice what I've done over here is I've kind of rehearsed the same process we went through for the black line, y equals x minus 1. Sorry, it's not as straight as I'd like it to be. Um, and knowing that if I just have it graph without its absolute value sign, that's what it's going to look like, right? There's that half gradient. Shouldn't curve away like that, but you get the idea. Now I'm going to reflect it upwards. This part over here. 
okay? Just like before, I should label my, my um, different branches here. This is regular old half x plus one. And this is the negative version, which is, what is the negative version? One minus half. Hmm. Now, I should point out, uh, when I went from this version to this version, I switched them around, right? Because if you take something like five minus two, and you want the negative version of that, if it's a difference, you can reverse the order. Okay. However, over here, it doesn't make as much sense to reverse the order because they're both going to get negative signs on them, right? So this is just a cosmetic thing, it just looks slightly different, but there's no reason to write that one first because you're going to have a minus sign anyway, so there you go, it's done. Let me just write this equal sign over here so it's a little more obvious. Wonderful. Now, what were we trying to do? I've done my graphs. What was the point of the graphs? Find intersection. Yeah, I want to know where the graphs collide with each other. That's where they are exactly equal to one another. And you can actually see where those points are on your graph. Your graph will be even better than mine. It's a bit terrible with the scale and the curvings and what have you. But there is one point of intersection, and there is the other. Now here is where it's going to be so useful. We're going to get value out of the fact that we labeled the branches. Remember I said, hey, label them. Don't just uh, draw lines everywhere and don't tell me what they are. Tell me what each of the equations is. Here is why. Can you see that the black branches intersect with this branch that's blue? Do you see that? Have a look at this branch over here. Do you see that he's completely irrelevant to part B, to me solving the rest of this question? Why is he completely irrelevant? <laughs> He, he doesn't intersect, and even though I don't have the whole part of the graph, I know he'll never intersect. Never, ever, ever. I could go draw, draw it all the way to negative infinity, and it's not going to happen. Why is that? It's because of the gradient, right? You can see they're actually diverging from one another. This guy is climbing up, this one's climbing, but not as fast, okay? So therefore, I can safely ignore that y equals half x minus 1, okay? Instead, I'm just going to solve when this guy is equal to this, and when this guy is equal to that, and that will give me two solutions, okay?